Well, good day, guys, and welcome to what's going to be a, a pretty quick video. This is just a um, a quick one to say thanks to everyone who, who checked out my Simpson Desert series. Um, I've been blown away by the response I got over the series. It was just initially meant to be just videos of uh, me and the family and a few friends to check out, and I thought, why not? chuck it up on um, a few adventure pages I'm on and um, and see how it goes and I've, I've been blown away with the response guys um, so to everyone who checked it out commented liked it shared it along thanks very much it's uh, it's very humbling to see when you um you put something out like that for it to get such a great response so to everyone who's um who's watched it thanks very much um, this video is just a um, a quick one I've had a few people reach out to me and ask what's the um What's the story with my KDM 690? Um, I didn't really cover it in the video what I was up to or what I've done to this bike to get it ready for the desert. So I'm just, just shooting out to a local little bit of bushland where I'm going to um, give you, I guess, the tour of uh, behind the bars of, of my KDM 690 and um, give you an idea of what I did to get, get this bike ready for the, uh, the Simpson Desert and uh, other trips that I have planned in the future. So once I get out there and find a quiet spot, I'll, uh, I'll get the camera rolling and give you the tour. Alrighty guys, so found a bit of a quiet spot, not too far from home, in the bush. You can probably hear a few, few vehicles going by. Anyway, uh, this is my KDM 690. Uh, it's a 2017 model. Um, I picked it up second hand with about 6,000 kilometres on it. And when I bought it, it was actually a super motard. Um, I bought it as a super motard because at the time that was the type of riding I was doing. I'd just come off a WR450 that I'd converted over to a motard. I had a DRZ400 which was a motard before that and that was what the style of riding I was doing. Um, and I thought you know the KDM 690, very versatile bike, a bit better road manner than the, the other bikes I'd had. And I thought you know it had the dirt wheels and everything with it. And I thought this, this will be a great motard and, and possible dirt bike. Well, after a first ride on dirt, I was hooked again. I hadn't ridden dirt in a fair while, and I was hooked immediately. And the uh, progression of building it into an adventure bike began. So it started off with the uh, the 14 litre Safari tank up the front, um, and I went for a few rides like that. I chucked on a bit of a windscreen on the. Um, the front of the factory headlight to get out a bit of out of the wind and get rid of a bit of that wind buffering that you get on them and then uh, then uh, things progressed we could say uh, once the the adventure bug had really bitten in I was hooked and um, the build really began from there so as you can see yeah not not your typical 690 um, started off obviously the tank and then I went and uh, replaced it came with a B&B uh, bash plate and I replaced it with the rally raid uh, toolbox style bash plate it's a little bit better protection and it gives you a little bit of storage up the front for um, tools or uh, in my case I think I've got the spare bolts and zip ties and a little funnel if I need to change oil or anything like that's tucked away in there um, I then found a set of racks I tried to do this build on the cheap um, but still keep the bike looking fairly good. So I found a set of used racks off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I believe they're just KTM brand. I picked them up for like a hundred bucks from a bloke not far down the road from me. And they um, they sit a little further back than I'd probably like, but they do keep the bags away from your legs when you're riding. And um, and support the uh, the Wolfman panniers that I have quite well. Um, had a B&B rack on it already. It was the slimline one, so I didn't have this bar around it. And I found on the first ride I went on, it actually started to bow and bend. So again, back on Marketplace, and I found found this rack secondhand. A bloke was selling it off, so I quickly snapped that up and fitted that up. And yeah, much stronger. I didn't have any trouble with this one bending while I was out in the desert. Uh, what other mods have we done? The Wings Pipe. It went on pretty early in the piece. Um, it's great. Much better than the factory one. Much lighter. Uh, overall way better pipe sounds great expensive yes um, they don't they don't give them out for cheap um, I also fitted at the time it's uh, tucked up under the seat a uh, a Rottweiler airbox replacement 
much bigger air filter. Um, I run filter skins on that, so daily you just take the seed off, quickly whip off the filter skin, have pre-oiled filter skins, and chuck them on each day. Uh, what else? We did just a B&B case saver, got rid of the factory plastic one. Down here we have uh, the OMS Adventure Pegs. Now, I love these things. They're huge, they stick out a fair way, but when you want to stand up for hours on end, they're comfy as all buggery, they're a huge platform to stand on, and I have absolutely no trouble on them. I think they really help with your fatigue. Um, you have to put bigger pegs on the 690s anyway. The factory ones are too narrow. They tuck in under the seat line and they're horrible. You're standing on the end of them. So I was always going to put pegs on it. And these these were a good one to get. Uh, steg pegs, they're great for the desert. I'd never really you know, read much into the myth that steg pegs are a good thing. I thought, oh, you know, I'll get a set for the desert. And wow, I should have got them way earlier. Um, they're great, you just tuck the boots back on them and, and hang on and away you go. Up the front behind the bars, there's a Scott steering damper tucked in there. Wasn't a huge help on the sand, I thought maybe it would be would be better than it was. I had to dial it right back to, um, to soften it up a bit and give me a bit better control, but on the corrugated dirt roads I found it really great. Dialed it back to where I normally have it set and just takes there that any corrugations or wheel ruts and there's plenty of wheel ruts in the tracks out there after the rain um, if you fall in one of them it really helps stabilize the bike as they as it dives into them what else have we got uh, the ram mount double take mirrors I fact I swapped them out from the factory ones just a bit tidier better they don't shake as much as the factory ones and unbreakable so good thing um, double USB socket that was just a quick add-on but I obviously needed charging for GoPro batteries and phones and stuff like that. So there's another GoPro mounted on the bars. Now I didn't use that much on the trip. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the camera angle that it gives. And so there's going to be some modifications to that. And I actually didn't know how to, to, to dub the footage over the top of the other footage in, in the editing. So I've since learned how to do that. Up front, uh, tire mesh, sorry. A uh, TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system. Now that was invaluable on this trip because um, the amount of flat tires I got, and you would have seen it flashing and beeping and carrying on in some of the videos if you've watched them. Um, it shows the temperature of the tires as well as the pressure, and most of the time it was just flashing to let me know the temperatures were low because it was actually pretty cold out there. Um, so it has a low temperature warning as well as pressure. Um, it can be changed. I haven't read through the instructions how to change it because it's never bothered me. But obviously it's something I need to look at because it was driving me nuts. It was always flashing and catching my eye. And I was, after the first flat tyre, then I had anxiety about more flat tyres. And, well, you saw how that progressed throughout my trip. Uh, up the front, this is just my phone, my everyday phone, a um, Samsung Note 5. It's mounted on a uh, wireless quad lock charger. So there that is there. The phone just clips onto that. And uh, that was my, for my navigation. I just run the HEMA apps and uh, worked great. Once I had a bit of a play with it and got it working, it was fantastic. Now the big one. The big one, why my 690 doesn't look like anyone else's 690. It has the Yankro Stage 2 fairing. Uh, I believe, and I still believe, this might be the first kit that Joe has made for 690 with the complete uh, fairing. Um, he's made the headlight, like the, uh, the headlight assembly for multiple different bikes, I believe the 690s, 701, DR650, and I think the DRZ400 he's made them for, so you'd have to contact him up there on the Sunshine Coast, um, and to ask what bikes he's got available now, but I have seen since he's produced mine that he's done a few. Um, I went initially for just the halogen globes. Um, they were good, not great, and uh, because I lent my bike out to Joe, um, he had my bike up there for a fair while doing uh, designing of the, of the actual shape of the fairing and stuff like that. We we did a bit of behind the scenes deal and, and sorted out the headlight package to go to the LEDs, and um, I'm bloody glad I did because they are fantastic. As you see in the the last video, riding back to Inaminka, just how much trust you could put in these headlights to um. 
to get you out of trouble. Now, the other thing I really liked about this Yenko, it's obviously Australian built, is, is on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Um, I looked around at all different kits and um, wasn't a fan of, of a lot of them, the way they bolt together and stuff like that. This is all just a one piece blow molded plastic, I believe, and um, don't quote me on that. But yeah, it's all one piece, it's solid, just mounts down in behind the triple clamp onto the front of the head stem. Um, speedo relocation, so it brings up a lot higher because um, anyone who rides a 690 knows that the, the speedo is in a shit of a spot. And then the other thing I liked was the screen. Now this screen's effectively bulletproof. Well, you can um, you can drive over it, you'll just scratch it up, it won't actually break, it just bends. And the way Joe's mounted them, just on four rubber points, like um, the old fenders back in the day, if you uh, happen to go over the bars real hard and hit this, it just pulls off. So it just pops off and uh, saves you from breaking the screen or, or impaling yourself on the screen. So I really like that, and um, and it's a good price point. It's actually probably cheaper than, than any other um, any other sort of fairing for a KDM 690 on the market. So again, that was a, a good selling point. But uh, what else we run? I run Motors Desert HTs on this trip. I've run these tyres for a fair while, and I really like them. The front is not probably the greatest tyre, but it's cheap and easy to get. Um, I can get them from MX Superstore just down the road and uh, I think they're in Burley Heads down the Gold Coast uh, and Desert HD on the back. Now I do like this tyre other than the fact it's it's very noisy on bitumen but it's been a great tyre. Um, bites really well. I had a few flats on this trip but I don't think it was in relation to that tyre. I've run one of these tyres for about 10,000 k's now on this bike and probably before this trip I'd had one flat so I think that's pretty standard um, sort of you know riding that distance to get a flat every now and then but I don't believe the tyres were the reason I was getting flats it's just first one my fault uh, second one pure unlucky and the third one well you know putting a front tube in the back's destined to fail eventually so but yeah guys that's it that's my KDM 690 um, you see the giant loop tank bag up front um, I have Wolfman panniers on the back and a Wolfman duffel bag on the back of that. If you want to know anything more about my luggage or uh, or the gear that I took out on the trip, feel free to fire me a question or a comment, and I'll um, I'll consider making a video on that. I know everybody's got a um, got a review of their gear and stuff like that, but and I've seen a million of them, but they're they're handy to see. So if you'd like me to make one of those in the future, just shout out, and I'll um, when I get a chance, I'll make a video. But until then, guys, we'll, we'll see you next time.